Welcome to Trinity Church. We have an amazing worship experience planned for you and your family, and it is about to start. You know what? I'm standing right in the center of our church building lobby because as you can see, we are hard at work. We are preparing, we're renovating, we're refreshing God's house because we are going to gather again together here in the future. But today we're blessed to be together through the medium of digital communication. I'm so glad you're here. It is a new beginning. It's the first week of the month. And every month, the first week, we start our worship with communion. And so I encourage you, get the people in your house, gather them, and then contact your friends. You could even have a watch party together. Have them go online and together participate. Go to your refrigerator, gather wherever you have some kind of a beverage and get your communion elements together, a cracker, something to drink, whatever you have, make it simple, but get ready as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table. Well, I'm so glad you're here today. I know that God has a word for you. It's going to happen today. Let's prepare and let's open our hearts as our worship team leads us now. Come on, church, let's tap our hands and give the best glory to our Jesus, our Savior. Come on. Yeah. We sing. Here in your life we find what makes us come alive, a sacrifice of praise. City on the hill, a city on the hill, surrender to your will, your glory on display, your glory on display. Come on. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy, worthy to be praised, Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. Consuming every space, it's uncontainable. You're coming, you're coming like a flood. Our hearts are feeling now. All things are possible. All things, come on. All things are possible. Yeah. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Your praise. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of your prayers. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. 
that was amazing. Yeah, Our was. worship Praise team God. were so grateful, Man. wonderful, yes. I, I, I got to say, uh, we're, we're just blessed at Trinity Church. We really are. Thank God for that team. And honey, we have come to the tape of the Lord first Sunday of every month as we do. But I think we should explain <laughs> a little bit about where we're seated here, right? We are right in the church lobby, the building. And as you can see, our team, even though we're not open in the building on Sunday, we are working yeah. hard every day. We're so grateful for the team here our at Trinity. School. The school has opened on virtual biggest and ever. it's the biggest ever. And yes, those kids will be coming back face to face and we know it's all going to happen. But here in the lobby, you can see we are cleaning and scrubbing and sorting and painting and working hard. And then pastor, right in the center of the lobby, mm -hmm. we have the Ark of the Covenant right yeah. behind us because we're in the season of tabernacles. So this is an amazing yeah. new beginning yeah. as you start the new series. And today, the first Sunday of the month, we worship the Lord with communion. Hallelujah. Well, why don't we look at the Word of God today from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It'll come on your screen, but if you have your Bible, just turn there with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this yes. in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Wow. Just so thankful for the table of the Lord. Thankful that he gave us a way. It's really, it's um, an act of worship that we could remember yes. his sacrifice by. And every month when we as a congregation come around the table, usually it's in the sanctuary, but for six months and almost seven now, we've been in our homes and yet we've still practiced and commemorated the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So today I want you at home, whatever you gathered, whether it's a piece of bread or a cut cookie or whatever it is, and take it with me. And we're going to offer it to the Lord right now and pray and ask God to bless it. Lord Jesus, yes. we're so thankful and grateful for the broken body of Jesus Christ. We're so thankful that you allowed your body to be broken so that the broken places of our lives could be put back together. Bless this element that represents your broken body, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Shall we partake together? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to look at the cup. This represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And this blood covers our sins. It really, really covers our sins. And it also provides healing. The stripes on Jesus' back, the blood that he shed, it brings healing. It also brings forgiveness. If you'll appropriate it today, I'm going to talk about it at the end of my message. Please. Let's ask God to bless the cup today. Father, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ, your son. We're so grateful, blessed Savior, that you allowed your life's blood to leave your body, sacrificing your life once and for all, the spotless Lamb of God, that we might be forgiven and saved. 
bless this cup, which is a symbol of your shed blood. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Shall we partake together? Wow. Praise thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Can you just say thank you, Jesus? Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. We Wonderful. say it all the time on Communion Sunday. Hallelujah. Well, we're so excited because as we noted earlier, this is the season of tabernacles. And this is our first week as we press towards the Day of Atonement. So as introduction, why don't you just watch this? The days of all. It's going to be a fantastic month. I'm so glad you've joined us today. And Dr. Robin's going to talk to us about something very, very helpful. Well, as we start the season of Tabernacles, we at Trinity pray first. That's how we start every new season with Amen. prayer. And coming on the screen is the details I hold in my hand, the 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting Guide. Now, if you're like me, you need to focus, especially during these days where it has been a pandemic. And through this guide, there are 21 prayer emphasis. Now, it all starts and kicks off online, all virtual. We're going to be praying together. It kicks off tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. You can be a part and you can download the guide for prayer. People might even be watching and say, well, you know, I... I feel a longing to pray, Pastor Robin, but I don't know how to pray. Well, we have developed a booklet for you. It's right on the website, right on the screen. You download this booklet and it gives you the exact words that you can use as we move through these 21 days. I encourage you to register digitally because again, if you're like me, I need somebody to push and coach and nudge me so that I grow. And that's the purpose. The purpose is spiritual growth that will make a change in your life. This is for your spiritual being. We are mind, we are body, but we are spirit. And some are absolutely empty spiritually right now. If you don't experience something on the inside uh, of, of God talking to you, then it's never going to happen on the outside. It really is an inside out experience with Jesus. And that's the season that we've come to, the season of tabernacles and in particular the Day of Atonement, the Atonement Day offering. And this has historically been our heart for the house offering. And we started this segment earlier. Uh, we are here in the lobby and we have done so much repair on this church building these past six months. Things that you wouldn't even be able to see that had to be accomplished. I'm just so grateful. Good, good things have happened. But now, as you can see, uh, the sanctuary is pretty stripped and we're going to put it back together. When you get back here, uh, I don't think you'll recognize some of the great victories we've accomplished together. Today, I want to just read one passage of Scripture. This is uh, the, the word that Haggai got from the Lord. I'm not going to read the whole thing. We've done it so many years in a row. But this one verse, I love this, in Haggai chapter 1, God speaks through the prophet and he says in verse 7, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains. Bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. Right. Well, this is the season of the year that we read this passage and go, it's time for a heart for the house. And that's what our Atonement Day offering has always been about putting the house back together. And we have to improve technically. This third awakening that I'll talk about in a minute, it's gonna be a last day revival that's gonna be largely technological. 
How else are we going to get behind the 1040 window where people aren't allowed in to tell people about Christ? Over 2 billion souls have never heard the name of Jesus. I believe they're all going to get a chance, honey, before the Lord returns. So we're upgrading everything in our technical abilities, and that includes a giant LED screen that we're believing God to help us put in. This will make our set in the house of God on our stage, it will actually be a production center that you would think you're watching a program on any of the major networks. I'm telling you, I believe that God has helped us get ready for the last day revival. Would you join Pastor Robin and I in this last day offering on September 27th. You'll be able to pledge. There's a way that you can pledge on screen today. And then also today is it's time to give. And there is an envelope that some of you received. If that's the way you like to give, you can mail it in Trinity Church and send it in. Or on the banner that's on your screen, you'll see the different ways to give. I encourage everybody on this first Sunday of the month, let's get going and then talk. If you are married, if you're with someone, talk to them about what you're going to give this year, yes, sweetheart. Yes. I just believe that we're going to need a huge offering to cover uh, this need. And I tell you, our deacons are full on. Everybody is full on. I thank God for the support. Let's do what only God can do when we respond to him, give, and it will be given unto you. Come on, let's believe God right now in prayer as we get ready to give. Lord, thank you from the deep of our hearts as pastors today for people who've been so faithful during this pandemic. Lord, we see an end in sight. Finally, it's going to happen. We believe it. But Lord, we don't know exactly when we'll be able to meet again. We're asking today, Lord, that you would speak to hearts, that there'd be those who will pledge for this coming September 27th, Day of Atonement, heart for the house, and that today would be faithful again with tithes and offerings on this first Sunday of the month. Bless them, I pray. In Christ's name, amen. God bless your hearts. Open your heart as our worship team comes for one more song. God bless you. We are an altar of broken stones, but you delight in the Offering. You have the heavens to call your home, but you abide in the song we sing. Ten thousand angels surround your throne to bring your praise that will never see. But hallelujah. Still your favorite melody We sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah We sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah 
at the person who loves worship. I mean, I love worship and I love our worship team. Thank you so much for the wonderful ministry and song to the Lord today, worship team. Today, we begin a brand new series of Bible messages. Oh man, I don't know when I've been this excited and this brand new collection is entitled The Days of Awe. Oh man, that's what the Jewish people referred to as the season of atonement. Actually, it falls under the heading of the season of tabernacles. I'm gonna to talk to you about it. There are three different Jewish seasons with a combined total of seven feast days during those three Seasons. I'm going to talk about it today. You know, it was 17 years ago this month that Pastor Steve Muncy talked to us in the old tent on atonement and this particular season of tabernacles. And that was the first time we did a faith pledge for the atonement offering. And I got to tell you something, folks, something in me changed that week. It's been 17 years. And at the end of this message today, I'm going to share with you just a brief history of what these three seasons have meant in the ministry of Trinity Church and the growth our practice of God's word has helped to make. I'm so excited about it. But let me just say that tomorrow begins 21 days of fasting and praying. And we will, on the last Sunday of this month, September 27th, end the 21 days. In fact, let me show you real quickly, if I may, four key days in the next 21 days that I want you to join us on a Zoom early morning prayer call. Would you look at this with me? Here we go. 21 days of prayer and fasting beginning tomorrow, September 7th, through Sunday, September 27th. There are four early morning prayer Zoom calls. 
These early morning calls will start at 6 a.m. And they start tomorrow morning. First, Monday, September 7th. That's tomorrow. That's the first of four Zoom calls. There'll be one hour, 6 a.m. until 7 a.m. And then Monday, September the 14th, a week from tomorrow, day eight. That'll be another one hour, 6 a.m. prayer meeting on Zoom. Then Monday, September 21st, day 15 of the 21 days, our third one hour early morning Zoom call, 6 a.m. until 7 a.m. And finally, the last of the 21 days of prayer and fasting will be a Sunday morning on September the 27th. And it will start at 6 a.m. the Zoom call and it will go for one hour. And by the way, that day we will fast from 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. That is the day of atonement. In those four, Monday and the last one, Sunday, early prayer meetings, our worship team is going to sing, you'll see them, and the band play those four sessions. So it's going to be a time of praise and worship. I will lead them all. I'll come on at 6 a.m., so don't come on at 6.20. Be there when Pastor Rich starts, all right? And then every one of those special prayer Zooms, we're going to have seven needs of those seven days that follow that we're going to bring to the Lord in prayer. Uh, you're getting your prayer guide. Maybe you've already received it in the, in the mail. Uh, you're getting a, a, a fasting pledge that I want you to fill out and get it into us. Or there's a way on the screen today that you can say, I'll be fasting with you, Pastor. There'll, there'll be six different tracks, and that way we'll have a feel of how many are fasting during these 21 days. Uh, that'll be a one-hour call for four weeks in a row. I don't want you to miss that. You'll get, uh, the entire church will get the Zoom link uh, each Sunday for that following Monday. And then, of course, uh, you'll get it for that last Sunday morning. It's going to be a great time. Now, let me say that next week I have a very special guest that will be preaching. I'll be here but our guest preacher will be my dearest friend, Pastor Steve Muncy. Pastor Steve, next Sunday, will introduce his message after I introduce him. And then he's going to give us a message called The Throne Room. Oh, man. And in that message, he talks, and I have uh, our Trinity Church replica right behind me here, he will talk a little bit about the Ark of the Covenant and what is in that Ark. No one can find the Ark, but in that Ark, I believe someday it will be discovered or God will bring it through after the tribulation into our thousand-year millennial rule. I don't know, but when that Ark is discovered, they'll find three different objects that Pastor Steve will talk about next week. And friends, I'm telling you, Tell your friends to get on this sermon series. If they're not on today, get them on next week. It's going to be a dynamic, dynamic time. Now, I, ha I should say one more thing about this introduction. After Pastor Steve preaches next week, the following week, the third message, I'll be giving the seven blessings of the atonement. Oh, yes. We are moving now at the end of this month into double portion season. And when you hear it, you're going to say, I've got to get involved. If you've never been involved before, you must be involved. And then the last Sunday, the day that we're going to fast from sun up till sundown, September 27th, I will be preaching why I believe the third great awakening is right in front of us that our church and the churches of the world that preach Jesus 
have been shut down from public services so that the churches that didn't already know will know this field of technology that I'm coming to you this Sunday on. You see, this last great revival will be go and tell, but it will also be show and tell by way of technology. How else do you break through the 1040 window? That's the part of the world where the gospel is not allowed in. And I believe Jesus is going to let everybody hear the good news at least once before the rapture. It could happen in the next several days. It could happen tonight. But I believe he's going to give us a little time for one last shot that every tribe and every nation shall hear the good news. Now look with me today to the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus. And I want you to look with me to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1, verse 2, and verse 27. The scripture says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. The tenth day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. Hold a sacred assembly and deny yourselves and present a food offering to the Lord. Today, the message is entitled, An Introduction to the Day of Atonement and Heart for the House. Let's look today at the three seasons and the seven feasts of the Jewish calendar. I believe God is going to use it in a dynamic way. The King James Version uses feasts in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 2. The Hebrew word for feast is moed. The word moed in Hebrew translates an appointment or fixed time or season or cycle or a set time. Now, folks, the NIV that I read to you earlier says my appointed time, which is correct. Now, why is this so important? Because God is telling us here that when I talk to you about this season, It's going to be the same every year. It's an appointed time at the same time of the year every year. And I'm going to teach you again if you've forgotten how to prosper. In fact, this teaching will not help you prosper. This teaching will make you prosper. This is what God is showing us. We're in a season right now where God wants to make us prosper and not, oh, I hope I can. I hope it happens. No, he says, if you will follow my requirements, not, uh, let me stop. I know you don't like that word requirements. I know you don't like that word conditions. But the truth is, there has to be a give attached to every receive. In other words, there's a condition all through God's word. You do this, I'll do this. You do this, I'll do this. Why is you do this so important? Because me doing this shows my faith in God. I'm moving with his requirements because I know he's going to answer back. I know that my faith will produce a victory that had I not exhibited my faith, the victory would not have occurred. Church, please get that into your head and most of all, into your heart. So let's get started on these three seasons and the seven feasts during the seasons. The first season is the season of Passover. And the scripture tells us 
in the season of Passover, Numbers chapter 9, verses 2 and 3, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. Now, this included an eight-day period of time. And during this eight-day period of time at Passover, three different feasts took place. Let's look at them. The three feasts of Passover are Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. Now, folks, every one of these feasts point towards the coming Messiah. They were laws, they were practices in the Old Testament, but all of them pointed towards Jesus, the Messiah. For instance, during the feast of Passover in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 4 and 5, the lamb dies once and for all to cover the sins of the people in that family. Well, hallelujah, there came a lamb eventually, Jesus Christ, that died once for all. When you think of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Bible talks about it in Leviticus 23, verses 6 through 8, and it talks about the Since we've been delivered from sin, now we are able to move away from our disobedience and run towards Jesus. And then when you look at Leviticus chapter 23, verses 9 through 14, we now see uh, the feast of the first fruits, which means that we now rise. We're no longer in disobedience. We now rise with new life, new hope, a new creation, and we run away from who we used to be. Hallelujah. Now, see how it all points to Jesus? I love this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, which simply says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new, hallelujah, is here. Then, the second season is the season of Pentecost. Oh, man, at Trinity Church, we talk about Pentecost all the time because we are a New Testament, actively believing in the New Testament church. And Pentecost has so much to do with the way we as a church operate. The event happened 50 days after the first Passover. And I'm telling you, friends, next week, Pastor Steve is going to say some things about this. You know, I've talked about, it. I don't want to steal that thunder, but it's going to be dynamic. But the scripture talks about one feast during Pentecost, and it's known as the Feast of Weeks. Now, this was just a single gathering, one feast day during the season of Pentecost. And it's discussed in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 through 22. And in that passage of scripture, the Hebrews were taught how to live in the supernatural power of Almighty God. Now, you and I both know that they failed a lot and it didn't happen a whole lot, but that passage of scripture talks about that feast day of the Feast of Weeks and how they could live in the supernatural power of Almighty God. Now, that again points to our New Testament, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it's Jesus talking to his disciples just before he ascends to the right hand of God on the Mount of Olives. And here's what he said, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, folks, that points to what's going to happen to us after Jesus left. He sent in the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost, 
this eternal power of Almighty God. And Jesus had said, long before this day, he had said, and greater works than these shall you do because I'm going to my Father. He was talking to us. He said, I'm going to ascend to the right hand of God the Father after I've conquered death, hell, and the grave. And I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. You're going to be filled with power from on high. You're going to live in it, operate in it, and you're going to do even greater things than I have done. Oh, man, the season of Pentecost, the feast of weeks. Oh, hallelujah. And let's look at this third and final season in the Jewish calendar. We're in it now. It is the season of tabernacles. And with this season, there were three last feasts. Look at them with me quickly. The three feasts of tabernacles. Trumpets. Atonement and tabernacles. So during this season, there are three feasts. And by the way, this happens over a 21-day period of time, the season of tabernacles. And uh, initially, we're looking at the Feast of Trumpets, which is spoken of in Leviticus 23, verses 23 through 25. The gathering of Israel points to the fact that repentance was happening. And because of the repentance, they were being cleaned and cleansed and prepared for their great God. And I got to tell you something, folks. This season talked about the incorruption of the saints of Almighty God. That's what Leviticus talked about during the Feast of Trumpets. Now, this reminds me of something else. The Bible says that Jesus gave himself up for the church in order that, look at this, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 and 7, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blessed. Hallelujah. So once again, we see the Feast of Trumpets pointing towards Jesus and what he's doing in us, his church today. And then secondly, the actually it would be the sixth feast is the Feast of of atonement or the day of atonement that we are actually moving towards on September the 27th. And the scripture talks about it again in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 26 through 32. So the Levitical teaching on atonement, Feast of Atonement, prayer, righteousness, and faith were emphasized along with supernatural cleansing during this feast day season. And folks, why not? My goodness, let's get right with God. Let's, let's ask God to do a whole new work in us. We're, we're moving into a season after the 27th of this month of double portion. We're talking about the Jewish New Year. We're talking about six months of double portion. You say, Pastor, you're getting worked up. I guess so. I'm excited. Folks, we have 17 years as a congregation. Wait till I tell you at the end of this message what God has done in those 17 years. It's absolute proof of what we've been teaching all these years that God is honoring us during this time of the year. If you'll bring your very best offering on the 27th of September. I'm talking about a sacrificial not something that you can blow off. It's an extra 10 bucks I can make it. No, something that's going to cost you. Something that is your best. Oh, friend, I'm telling you, God is about to do something in this church and in this city and in this nation that has no parallel, I believe, in history. A third great awakening. Are you ready? Are you ready? Finally, one more feast, and that's the feast of tabernacles, which was mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23, 
verses 33 through 49. It represents what? Fruit, harvest, latter rain, the Feast of Tabernacles. I could go into it. I'm not going to. We'll do it at a later time uh, during this month. But I'm going to tell you straight up. This was about harvest. That's what the Feast of Tabernacles represented. And it was, like I said earlier, a double portion season for six months. Think about it. The fall, the grain's in, uh, everything's in, the vegetables in, the cold weather's coming. It's going to freeze up. No, 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 no. We're going to get it all in the barn. Hallelujah. We're going to take six months. We're going to have a double portion, the victory. Everything in America operates on the Jewish system. Wall Street operates on it. Come on. Why shouldn't we, the Christian church, get just as excited? Now, let's talk about what's happened in these last 17 years. Now, you know, Dr. Robin and I came in 1998. And God was very good to us, has always been good to us. God uh, helped us with just a small group of people on 125th Street. Oh, my goodness. We had like... I think we had about 250 in the congregation at that time that were kind of the ones that found funded the church and helped us make ends meet. And we had, I think, 107 people vote on us to be the pastor. And uh, by the way, we had about seven people vote no. Hello. Anyway, I just thought I'd say that. But the point is, uh, we got going and God began to bless us. And we began to grow and Finally, after five years, we had built a large tent on the parking lot. So we had no place to park. We had to park all over the area and all kinds of facilities. But God helped us to grow to about a thousand people under that tent. And now our uh, permit from North Miami was running out. We knew we had about another year or so. And this building here became available. And it was so expensive. And we ended up putting about $12.5 million to $13 million into this facility here in Miami Gardens. I didn't think that was near possible. And one day, Pastor Steve, who's one of my dearest friends, Muncie, came to visit us for the week. And he said, Rich, I've just been taught by the Holy Spirit the three feast days. He goes, I have been researching for a year. He said, I'm getting ready to preach the first time uh, this year on the atonement season and the season of tabernacles. And he said, you need to teach us. He was just new at it himself. And so he came in and taught our first week on this subject. I would preached a few messages, but he came in and wrapped it up and received a pledge. And he had said to me, you got to get out of this old tent. It's not only caving in, the city's going to make you get out. You can't move back in the A-frame. You're too big now. You got a thousand people. And we knew this building was available. I said, Steve, we'll never be able to afford that. He said, don't say don't. Don't say we can't. Say it's not possible. Don't say any of that. Say God says I can do all things through Christ. Start thinking that. Well, I said, okay, I always have, but right now it's kind of hard. I'm in the tent. I like the tent. He says, you got to get out of the tent. And when he came in that week, he talked to us about atonement. We took pledges that day. Our church voted 100%. More people voted on that building that were there to vote me and his pastor years earlier. But they voted 100% to buy this new property. And friends, during the next years, we moved in one year from that offering. It was about December of 2004, and we moved in it officially in 2005. But through the years, God began to grow us like we'd never expected. And by the year 2004, 15, we had grown to over 4,000 people on a weekly average at our North Miami and the Miami Gardens campuses. I mean, services galore. Everybody was just in and out, in and out. Place was always packed. And that was the year that we planted the VU Church. And at the same time, we planted the Trinity Harlem in Harlem, New York City. And 
things began to explode after that. We sent lots of people and lots of money to plant those churches. And then in 2019, we planted the cool church with Pastor Terrence and a bunch of our people went with that plant and money went with that plant. Oh man, those men have done such a mighty work for God. And today in 2020, our average attendance on Sunday is over 8,000 people. If you include our church plants and friends uh, at Easter time, we're twice and even more than that. So many thousands of people and the thousands of people that accepted Christ. And friends, I thank God because of you. I thank God for our board of directors, our deacons who have held with us and we've just gone on faith. But I attribute so much of it to us keeping the word of God. Even though it's Old Testament, Jewish faith, we have embraced it as Christians because we see the final work of the Lord and I believe his anointing is on us and what he has given me in these coming years is amazing. You're going to hear more and more about it. I'm telling you, friends, I see the future clearer than I ever have seen it in my life. I want to see all of you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. We're going to do four 6 a.m. Zoom calls. I want all of you to join me. We're going to pray. We're going to fast. We're going to seek God for 21 days. I don't know when we're going to get out and back into the building. You can see it's torn up. Our building team has been working with me. They have said we, they fixed so many things. Oh my Lord, this is one popping congregation. We believe that God's going to help us get in some new flooring and other things. Oh, it's going to be, when you get here, it's going to be amazing. But you're going to be the ones that join with me in faith, prayer, fasting, giving. We're going to do it together. No wonder. Jewish people call this season the days of awe. As we go to close, I wonder if you've been watching this today and you've said to yourself, man, I haven't been involved like I should be involved. I don't really know the Lord like I should. I haven't really been living for Jesus like I should. Or maybe someone invited you on today. You've been watching. You're all by yourself in a hotel room or in a one-room efficiency. Or maybe you're in a mansion on Miami Beach. And you're saying, I need God. I don't even know Jesus. Today, I want every one of you who just heard me say that. It needs to say this with me. In fact, why don't all of you pray it? I want you to pray this prayer out loud with me right now. Dear Jesus. I've sinned. I'm not proud of it, but I admit it. Today, I lay my sin down. Take it, I pray. I don't want it anymore. I reach to heaven to receive your forgiveness, to take the place of my sin. I ask that you would accept me, Lord, into your wonderful family. Today, Jesus, I give my life completely to you. I'm yours, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, man. If you meant that prayer, you're a forgiven person. God forbid, but if you died today, you would wake up in the arms of Jesus Christ. I can promise you that. John 1 and 12 gives us that promise. If you prayed that prayer for yourself sincerely because you need to get to God. There's a number on your screen. I want you to put it in your cell phone now. Right now, do it, get it. And then text that number with these words. Pastor, I prayed the prayer. Pastor, I prayed the prayer. And I will know that you prayed that prayer with me and your life has been changed today. Oh, folks, I'm looking forward to next week. Get ready, get ready, get ready. This right here, the Ark of the Covenant. Get ready. Your life will never be the same. Next Sunday, I'll see you there.